Hello and welcome to TechEd LLC. Today we're going to be taking a look at the bandsaw and a little tour of the parts that are in there and how to safely use it. This would be the front side of where you'd be standing when you're using the saw. On the back side you can see that there's typically a motor. Sometimes it sits on top of the base. Other times it's actually in the base and may have a closed cabinet. The motor is attached to the wheel on the inside. This one is belt driven as most of them are and that bottom wheel is what turns the blade which is a band. It's a large band almost like a rubber band and it makes a continuous loop all the way around. The bandsaw is very unique because of the blade that it has. It's continuously cutting kind of like a circular blade does but with a bandsaw it's always cutting in one direction. It's always pushing down and there's no upward force and that's what makes a circular saw dangerous and a table saw dangerous where you don't have that with a bandsaw because the blade is always moving in the downward direction where you're cutting we'll, we'll see that in a little bit we're going to take this blade and put it in place put it inside the saw and when you do that it has to be properly aligned this would be done by your instructor the band has to be properly tensioned and that's what the top knob is and as you turn that top knot clockwise, it should start to stretch the band out and that will make it very taut and that's what makes it able to cut in a straight line. You also have another knob there in the middle and that one is for the alignment on the wheels on the inside. Here you have the guides for the blade. Now these are bearings and these bearings are very important because the, this back bearing here prevents the blade from moving backwards so you'll start to hear this whine a little bit as you're pushing onto it and then these two on the sides are preventing the blade from turning left or right on certain models you might not have bearings you might have these wear blocks that go in there there is another set of bearings underneath the table as well that does the same thing so to properly set these up, you back off all the bearings and then you bring up your bearings so they're just about a 32nd of an inch away from the blade and that way when it tries to go some way, it hits the bearing but when it's under normal running conditions, it actually doesn't touch the bearings. There is a knob in the center here on the side and what this does is it allows the guard to go up and down because you want this guard to be about an eighth to a quarter of an inch above the work, it does two things for you. It guards your hands from touching the blade. The closer it is to the workpiece, the safer it is. It also gets those guide bearings close to the work and gives you more control over the blade. You have a lot of benefits from putting that guard close to your work. Sometimes it does make it a little harder to see, but the benefits outweigh the hands. This one here we've applied a fence to the table. This would be used for ripping a piece of wood. You have to be careful in using a fence with a bandsaw because bandsaw blades tend to track to the left or to the right and you have to actually align the fence with the tracking of the blade. So it's not like a table saw. That can be sometimes kind of difficult. But you can see with a fence cut as the board is guided by the fence, the teeth of the saw continuously cut down. There's virtually no chance of a kickback when you're dealing with a bandsaw, and that's what makes it so safe. The part that's dangerous is you have a blade that's exposed, and it cuts really fast. But a bandsaw is a very nice machine for doing this type of stuff. Here's another view on the back side of how that board was being fed through the bandsaw using a fence. The next we're going to look at is a miter. Now this has a miter gauge going across and again the gauge itself is here and right now it's set up at a 90 degree angle so as you push the gauge it pushes the block of wood this way and pushes it through the saw. You can also adjust this angle here on a miter gauge and set it up for whatever angle it is that you need. Here's an example of that. This has been twisted a little bit. The gauge still goes straight, but the board is now held at an angle, so this cut would be at an angle. The bandsaw also is able to do a lot of curved cuts, which is nice. The trick about curved cuts is you have to make sure that your pivot point is the blade. 
you can't try to push the block of wood left or right to make it go left or right. You have to pivot at this point. If you do push left or right, then you're going to damage the blade because you're probably going to push it really hard against one of those bearings or one of the wear blocks. The danger zone in a bandsaw is marked in red. You never want to have your fingers in this area. If As long as you stay out of that area, you should be fine. Well, let's zoom in here a little bit more. You can see where the blade is. Always keep your blade about a quarter of an inch above, eighth to a quarter, whatever is recommended with your machine. And as always, you should read and follow your owner's manual as each machine is unique and also your instructor's instructions on how to use this machine. In this part of the bandsaw safety video, we'll be taking a look at different ways to use the bandsaw and also some other safety rules that you should follow. First one is to always ask permission from your instructor before using the bandsaw. Accidents can happen quickly on this machine, so it's always wise to make sure that your instructor knows that you're using it. Make sure you follow the instructor's directions and rules when they're giving their safety lessons in class. This is a good place to learn how to properly use the, your particular machine that you have in your classroom. Some instructors will have you read and understand parts of the owner's manual. Make sure you do this, and if you don't, make sure you ask for understanding. As always, wear your safety glasses while using any machines in the shop. Long hair should be tied back. You should remove or secure loose clothing, such as rolling up your sleeves, removing scarves, or the strings that hang down from hoodies, things like that. The guard on the bandsaw needs to be set at the proper height. Normally, this would be about a quarter of an inch above the top surface of the board that you're cutting. Make sure you have room for the board to slide freely underneath the guard, but don't leave too much room. The more blade that's exposed here, the more likely an accident can occur. So lower the blade so it's about a quarter of an inch above the workpiece. You should always keep your fingers out of the danger zone. There's a danger zone that's above the saw, which is pretty apparent. But there's another one which is below the saw, which a lot of people don't realize is there. So make sure you never reach underneath the table as well. When cutting curved surfaces, tight corners tend to need to have relief cuts put into place. The relief cut allows the blade to turn a little bit sharper than it could than if you didn't have that cut there. This takes a little bit of practice, so you can always ask your instructor if you need a relief cut in the curve that you're cutting. You should always wait until the blade comes to a complete stop before reaching in. The wheels of the bandsaw hold a lot of momentum, and it's one of the machines that actually does coast for quite a while. Some machines actually have foot brakes on them that you can press on and actually it'll stop the wheel so it doesn't take as long to stop. Another danger is people don't realize that that blade is still moving and never walk away from the machine until that blade has stopped either because the next person that comes up right behind you may think that it stopped but it's actually still coasting. So make sure that you stay there until that blade stops or before you reach in. Always report accidents and malfunctions to your teacher. If you do have an accident, make sure that your instructor knows. And if there's something wrong with the machine, or you feel like the blade is dull, or something's not working right, you should tell your instructor. This, this could prevent an accident from happening to somebody else. And if you don't know what you're doing, play it safe. It's that simple. Just make sure that you ask somebody or your instructor for help. See how many safety violations you can find in this image. I think the most obvious one was the thumb is in line with the blade. When the blade is getting ready to exit the material, it is always important not to have any body parts in line with the blade. A board can lunge forward a little bit because that when the blade exits the wood, there's less resistance there, so never be in line with the blade. Another one is the safety glasses are on the face because they're sitting there on the table. Sleeves aren't pulled up, that should have been rolled up to the elbow. The guard was not lowered into the correct position. The hand is within the danger zone. And there is scrap material laying on the table. Good job if you found all these safety violations. Here's a list of the rules that we just went over. Your instructor may want you to copy these down into your notebook.